in the early, well, late 1940s, early 1950s, when you're breaking in, there's a relationship that has to be formed with Atlantic Records because Atlantic Records, of course, is right on that cutting edge looking for rhythm and blues artists, and the label is just getting started. How do you meet Ahmed Erdogan, and how do you meet Herb Abramson, and where does that whole thing go? Well, if there's a history of Atlantic Records and it's told truthfully, I have to be at the top of it. I was the first female artist on that label. And um, the way I met, is my mic on? They don't want me to tell the truth, do they? <laughs> You're gone. No, but the way I uh, became acquainted with Atlantic Records, I had been fired from a job in Washington, D.C., and I was working at a club called the Crystal Caverns for the sister of Cab Calloway, Blanche Calloway, and she had allowed me to work there so I could earn enough money to get back home to Portsmouth, Virginia, which was only about 200 miles from there. But when I left home, my dad said, don't call back here. Going out there to sing the devil's music, don't even call back here. So I was working to earn a ticket. And at that time, um, one of the major theaters for black entertainment at that time was the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. And that particular week, the great Duke Ellington was appearing there. and. Uh, one of the first groups called Sunny Till and the Orioles. They were appearing on that bill. And there was a wonderful gentleman affiliated with the Voice of America for Armed Forces Radio at that time called Willis Conover. And the three of them came into the club where I was working. And I was working like for tips. We had a, a bowl on the piano there where people could come up and put money in and you would sing. And that night, I sang a lot of Billie Holiday things because at that moment, I thought I was going to be Billie Holiday, if anybody. And then if they didn't like that, I sang Vaughn Monroe and maybe Bing Crosby, you know. And a little red foley if it became necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was Willis Conover and Mr. Ellington who got up and went to a payphone, and they called Ahmed Erdogan, who was in Washington at that time, his father was Turkish ambassador to the United States at that moment, and he was forming a record company called Atlantic Records. And Willis Conover said, I would suggest that you come down and hear this girl that's singing at the Crystal Caverns. Um, Mr. Erdogan did not get there himself, but he sent a representative, and they verbally agreed to sign me to a recording contract. And we agreed that the initial signing would be done once I got to New York. And so we were en route to New York. Uh, in October, Blanche Calloway had called Mr. Schiffman, who ran the Apollo Theater, and sight unseen, he had agreed to book me. And we were en route to New York when I had an automobile accident. And my legs were crushed, and I remained in the hospital 11 and a half months before I got to New York. So when I finally did get there, uh, my contract with Atlantic Records was signed on my hospital bed in Chester, Pennsylvania. And I must say that our beginning was a very friendly one because they were kind enough to pay the hospital bill long before I ever sang. Is that right? And so I was in debt when I got there, you know. <laughs> no, but finally I did get into New York and when I finally went into the studios uh, to do the first thing for Atlantic, it was in a session with Eddie Condon uh, for Cavalcade of Music, and I sang a ballad by Russ Morgan called So Long. And I was on crutches the day I recorded that. That was the very first recording, and I had a relationship with Atlantic from 1947, which that was, up until 1961. And uh, evidently I'm still there, the records are still surfacing. Mm -hmm. <laughs>